in the grand cathedral city of Canterbury. An historic rivalry is about to take centre stage. It's England and Australia in a battle for the ashes. That's Perry off the mark as well with a classy shot. Are you excited? Yeah, really excited. Really excited. Are you going to kick their butt? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always the goal. Don't um... let Elise Perry's smile fool you. She might look like the girl next door, but she's a fierce competitor. It's got to be out now. Now it's out. She can bat. Smashes again. Has she gone all the way this time? You betcha. She can bowl. Bowl. Looking up to for a lot of years, you see. Oh, absolutely brilliant by the young. And she can kick a soccer ball. What a goal, Elise Perry. Marvellous finish. Right now, Elise is in high demand. Never say hey. And no wonder. Hello, Lisa, how are you going? Hello, very well, thanks. In a recent international survey, she was voted the most marketable athlete in Australia. This puts you ahead of Michael Clarke, Tim Cahill. It's not a list that I would have compiled, um, and I certainly wouldn't have had myself in there, but it was nice nonetheless. You're 24 and you've already achieved so much. Do you ever take a moment and think about that? I think about it most days in terms of, um, you know, the really wonderful experiences I've had and, and opportunities I've had so far to um, do essentially exactly what I love doing and, and playing sport. You won't catch Elise bragging about her achievements. Get that out swinging. She's inherited her humble manner from her parents. Fielded. <laughs> Your daughter is super smart, talented, gorgeous and nice. Gets it from my mum. <laughs> I was going to say, who, who can take credit for that? <laughs> Neither of us takes credit for that. No. Mark and Kathy Perry aren't the pushy parents you might expect to find behind a young sports star. Where's the toughness come from? <laughs> I know, these two are softies, aren't they? They never took Elisa's junior sports games too seriously. Uh, no, we're, we're very much the, uh, the, the parents in the, in the background. That, that's just us, you know, we don't like to jump up and down and, uh, and shout out or, you know, carry on. And... I remember you used to say to me, you know, if it was a, a club competition, we say, you know, there's no sheep stations riding on, on the outcome of this, you know, and it, it just didn't really matter who wins the under nine grand final, you know, and we all, always had that perspective on it. Elise and her older brother Damien grew up on Sydney's North Shore. There wasn't a sport she wasn't into or good at. I'd always be with the boys playing some kind of ball sport or running around and, um, yeah, getting quite a few pretty hard knocks from some of the guys, but um, in all fairness, probably giving it back just as hard. So did you just want to be one of the boys when you were growing up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I, <laughs> yeah um, I suppose down at soccer training we'd play, like, small-sided games and... Um, one team would wear shirts and the other team wouldn't wear shirts and I'd always be on the shirts team but I never really understood why my coach always put me on the shirts team. Uh, makes a lot of sense now but you know, a lot of my friends um, who were in my soccer and cricket teams used to always call me one of the boys too and I used to wear that with a badge of honour so yeah. Elise was a 16 year old schoolgirl when she became the youngest person ever to represent Australia in cricket. It's good pace. Oh, brilliance. Absolutely brilliant by the youngster. You know, it's a big part of Aussie culture and I don't see why girls can't play it. She was the toast of her high school. Was there ever any jealousy of, of what you were achieving and what you were doing? <laughs> no, I think they all thought I was crazy playing cricket. <laughs> what are you doing standing out there all day watching grass grow was generally the comment that they, they gave me. How nervous were you playing that first game for <laughs> Australia? Uh, pretty nervous. I just expected to, to hold the, the drinks the whole tour and, and the selector came around to my hotel room and, and knocked on the door and she said, we would like to give you a go tomorrow. And I think putting my joggers on and, and going for a walk to the local park and just practising my bowling action without a ball in the park for about half an hour and thinking if any of my teammates see me, they're going <laughs> to think I'm so silly. Just two weeks later, 
Oh, Elise Perry, absolutely outstanding. She's put a boot out and stopped the soccer skills. Elise strapped on her soccer boots to make her debut for the Matildas. This was her in 2011. Elise Perry tries to curl it in. What a goal! Elise Scoring Perry. a sensational left foot goal against Sweden. She's not even left footed. It's arguably the best Aussie goal in World Cup history. It was a um, pretty surreal little period for me um, and one that I'll, I'll remember really fondly. Is it pretty amazing to be able to say I'm the only person who represents our country in soccer and cricket? <laughs> um, I don't go around saying it too much. <laughs> I think people really? Would, yeah. Uh, I, I think it means a lot to me because I know how much I enjoy doing it. How much school did she miss? I think I counted um, conservatively 110 days in 11 and 12, you know, years 11 and 12, you know, which is rather significant. So that's, uh, that's getting close to non-attendance. How lucky was she that her dad just happened to be a high school maths <laughs> teacher? <laughs> I don't know whether that's, uh, that's, that's luck or something you, you don't admit to, you know, <laughs> to your friends, your father's a maths teacher. <laughs> Today, juggling an economics degree and her sporting career, still shot. Elise still looks to her dad for help. So I wait down the wicket. Mark and Elise can often be found training at their local cricket nets. Oh, sorry. Whoa. A father-daughter bonding session. Yeah. Am I safe standing here? That's not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> After a brief lesson and then just kind of grip it wherever it's comfortable on the handle. Be gentle. Be gentle, okay. <laughs> gentle. Like really gentle. Okay, okay. okay. I pluck up the courage to face the pairs. Okay, Langdon, here we go. You ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Shot! <laughs> Elise isn't so forgiving when it comes to the poms. Beautiful delivery. Oh, it's caught a glove on the way. The crowd is enthusiastic, but it's far from a sellout like at the blokes' matches. I've just actually heard on a couple of occasions men say, oh, gee, it's really worth watching. <laughs> yeah. While our male cricketers can demand yearly contracts of one and a half million dollars, our girls can earn as little as $26,000 a year. Is that frustrating that women's cricket and soccer do not get much coverage? I think from a society point of view, it's something that I'd really like to see grow and develop because I think it's really important for, for young girls to see that you know, a lot of girls do play sport, a lot of women play sport, that there's an opportunity to do that as a career, if you like. Elise is paving the way for future female athletes. She's the perfect role model. And this Golden Girls skills, on and off the field, have made her a sponsor's dream. How do you go with the photo shoots? The glamorous side of things always makes me laugh because I was a tomboy growing up and I think still to an extent have a little bit of that left in me. So, I mean, I think that's probably something that I'm least comfortable at being. And is it a necessary part of being a female athlete? I really don't think it is. I think hopefully that's, that's something that's sort of continuing to change and a lot more female athletes will be recognised because they're really, really good players. Am I getting an insight into oh, your cool. relationship here? She's wearing the boxing gloves. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm copping the punches, yeah. This is for leaving your dishes out. A big supporter of women's sport and Elise is her rugby playing fiance, Matt Tamua. How competitive is she, Matt? <laughs> not at all. Not, not competitive at all. Just soft punches. She got, she got where she is to now through just chance, I think. <laughs> No talent. No, nah, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Matt has even started his own special club to rival the Wags. What is a hab? Yep, you don't know. <laughs> it's shocking. Uh, no, uh, husband and boyfriends, obviously it stands for. We knew there was the Wags, so we wanted to create the hab, so we weren't left out. We started off with two and now we're up to two. So it's, <laughs> it's growing at a rapid rate. Well, as women's sport becomes more and more popular, that's the idea, it will take off. Mm. So I think eventually it will definitely take off when I quit and 
live off you. <laughs> <laughs> the busy athletes met in an airport lounge in 2012. A starstruck Matt asked a friend to take a photo of the pair. I see, it's like when you're in school and you get a friend to tell someone that you like them. That was kind of like the way I said, oh, can you ask if we can get a photo? So you got a photo. So. And her number, clearly. Yeah, and that was lucky as well. Um, that could have been creepy, though, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm lucky that went the right way. And then, no late last year, right. Matt popped the big question. And yes, he asked the old man yeah. first. I was a little bit afraid not to, uh, to, 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 to say... Yes, you know, because I just had, I envisaged this 95 kilogram wrecking ball, you know, coming, coming to uh, put my health uh, in jeopardy, you know, so... Uh, crash tackling you to the ground. Crash, crash tackling you <laughs> to the ground, you know, he's very good at that as well too, you know, he's outstanding. Well, we peaked a little early. Yeah. This sports power couple won't be racing down the aisle anytime soon. Oh, I'm winning already. Their focus right now is on the field. The Rugby World Cup for Matt. Brilliant little kick through. And for Elise, next season at Sydney FC and reclaiming that Ashes urn. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.